Uh, introduce you to Chuck Broadway and Peyton Grinnell. And of course, uh, you probably have seen their signs around town. Yeah, you can applaud. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, they're here just to, to answer some questions. I'm sure that you uh, have some questions. Uh, the way our evening will, uh, will be formed is that we have three questions that both candidates for Lake County have received already. And uh, so they've had time to know what we're going to be asking them. So they're going to answer those questions. And then uh, after we get done with those three questions, we'll open it up. And if you have a question for uh, either or both of the candidates, you can do that as well. Uh, we don't want to keep them here all night. They're probably totally exhausted beyond words, working and campaigning. Um, so, so, that's, so we want to, want to keep that in mind. Um, one of the, the reasons why this is happening is, and I want you guys to know it too, is that uh, I know in, in my heart, and I know I'm not the only one in our church, we want, we don't, we don't need just another church here. We want to be a church that is the central um, hub of our community, a place where people can go not just to hear the Word of God, not just to pray, but uh, to be informed, a gathering place for the community, uh, a hub of information and help. And that's the way we believe a church should be, uh, not just a place to come in and pray and, and listen to some guy yell at you for an hour um, or sometimes longer. Uh, but we, we want to be a, a hub of information and help. So that's, that's one of the reasons why uh, I've asked if you guys could be here tonight. Um, I'm hoping that some more folks will come in, so I'm in no rush to get started. But um, I will say this. Um, I was thinking about today, and I just want to share this with, with you guys and with everybody that's here. Um, you know, there's a, there's a philosophy in, in the church world that says that if, the, if uh, you know, if we're, if we're a, a, a prospering, vibrant church, that it'll help the community. And I think there's some truth to that. But at the same time, um, I've got to share with you what God's Word actually says. God's Word actually says in Jeremiah 29... Uh, there's a time when, when, when God sent his people into different places, out of Israel into different places. And, and he's speaking to his people and he said that we should work hard for the peace and the prosperity of the places that I've sent you. And, and to pray to the Lord for that city, for, for, uh, for its well-being will be your well-being. And so I say that because it doesn't matter what happens in our church. It doesn't matter if this place ends up with 5,000 people in it and we're planting churches and sending out ministries to all places of the earth, we're supposed to do that. But if our city is not healthy and prosperous and peaceful, then we are not a success. And so we, I just want to let you know that no matter what happens, whoever wins, uh, our Revolution Church wants to be uh, a part of this community and help it. So whoever gets that, that nod from the community, uh, lean on us. Let us help you. We're going to pray for you. We want to help you in any way, shape, or form. Let this place be a place that you know is available to you. If you want to have a gathering of people, just call, and absolutely, it's, it's open to you. So um, either way, either way it works out. I will say this also. What's up, chef? Um, <laughs> um, I'm not here to take any sides on any of the uh, candidates for any office. But as you know, it's no surprise that the presidential election is total insanity. And I don't know if anybody in this whole country likes either candidate, but we're going to vote for someone. Right? So we're taking sides. But I have to tell you, I've known Chuck for a long time. I've just met Peyton tonight. But I can tell you, in, the, in, in all the years that I've lived in this community, I've been here for over 20 now, I have never once, ever one time, heard a derogatory statement about either one of these two gentlemen. And so, no matter which way it goes, it's all good. It's all good, they're, good. they're great guys. So, um, with that being said, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna give each uh, of these two gentlemen an opportunity to give you a minute or two of just kind of like an opening, some just to say hello and introduce themselves to you, and then we'll start in with our questions. But before we do so, um, I don't know some of the folks in here, even though you're all over there and I kind of feel weird, instead of being towards the middle so I can see you. But um, some folks in here, I don't know you, but we're, a, 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 we're Jesus' church, and we love Jesus. And I don't know if you love Jesus or not, but um, Christian people, we pray. It's, it's just what we do. And so um, I don't know if you're into Jesus, but Jesus is totally into you. And so we're just going to pray for you. And we're going to pray for a second, and then we'll get started if that's cool. All right? Awesome. 
So, Father, we thank you for this night. Uh, I thank you for these uh, two wonderful men who have uh, given themselves to public service. Uh, kind of reminds me of you, Lord, uh, giving yourself uh, for the good of others. And so I'm thankful for them. I am uh, thankful that we have the opportunity to um, hear what they have to say, hear their heart. Uh, Lord, whatever happens in this election, um, we just pray your great blessing on, on both of these two men. No matter what happens, they're both still going to be public servants. They still have a job to do. And uh, Lord, they, um, from what I understand, uh, both of them acknowledge you as Lord and Savior. And so Lord, I just pray that you will bless them and guide them in every single uh, decision that they make. Uh, Lord, under their care, under their watch, let our, let our city be a place of peace and love and prosperity, Lord. Let love cover uh, a multitude of sin, if you will. Uh, let there just be peace. And help us, Lord, to support them and encourage them and to keep them in prayer, lifted up in prayer uh, all the days that they do serve us. So, Lord, thank you. Bless this evening, Lord, and let everything we do here honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, we didn't flip a coin, so I'm just going to leave it up to you two absolute gentlemen to decide who wants to go first and just grab a microphone. You got one on your chair there and just let folks know about who you are and what you're all about. Yes, cool. Sure. All right. Awesome. Well, good evening. Good evening. And, uh, thank you, Pastor, and thank you, Church, for having this forum. Um, my name is Charles Chuck Broadway and a candidate for Lake County Sheriff. I'm currently the chief of police for the Claremont Police Department, the largest city in Lake County, and I've been in that role for four years with uh, 20 years of law enforcement experience. A little bit about my background, I was born and raised in Long Island, New York. I uh, graduated from St. John's University, a bachelor's degree in business management. Met my wife and married for 22 years. We have four children, all girls. My oldest is in college. Next one is a senior in high school. Then I have um, two in sixth and in seventh grade. Uh, from there, I joined the ranks of the New York City Police Department in 1996. I advanced in my career there to a detective. Uh, while there, I remember a phone call as if it was like yesterday, and the phone call was, Chuck, you have to come back to work because a plane just crashed into the World Trade Center. That day turned to weeks and months uh, involved in search and rescue efforts, search and recovery efforts, also assigned to a landfill in Staten Island, sits and do tons and tons of debris, looking for items of sentimental value as well as evidentiary value. Relocated to Florida, continued my law enforcement career. My last agency prior to joining Claremont Police Department was FDLE, Florida Department of Law Enforcement. That's the state investigative agency for the entire state of Florida. While there, I rose to the ranks to a special agent supervisor. Last assignment there was over the highly regarded Public Integrity Unit. And within that unit, I had oversight over allegations of misconduct of public officials. We also investigated police officers involved shootings in Central Florida area, including Lake County. So whenever an officer utilized his or her firearm, we conducted that investigation and followed that report to the state attorney's office for their review. While there at Claremont, I'm sorry, while there at FDLE, the state, I saw an opening in Claremont. Tough decision to leave FDLE, the state investigative agency, to come to Claremont. Reason why I left and retired early, uh, one goal in mind, sole factor was I wanted to make a difference and an impact in a city and a community where I resided. Not only do, do I believe that that goal was met, do I do believe that goal has been exceeded. Claremont is not the same agency it was just a few years ago. My platform and why I'm running for sheriff, number one, is proven leadership. I encourage you to ask people in Claremont and South Lake County about the positive difference, positive influence that my leadership has made while serving there as a chief. My leadership has a track record, it's tangible. If I ask anyone about a definition of leadership, we give several different attributes of a great leader. But at the end of the day, it's using those attributes and characteristics to make a difference, make a difference in our communities, make a difference amongst our sphere of influence. Number two, commitment to the community. Not only do I believe in listening to your concerns, but validating your concerns and working collectively and collaboratively to come up with solutions, enhance quality of life, prevent crime, and reduce crime. And number three, dedication to progress. Policing is changing, it's continuing to change. I believe in the ongoing process of evaluating and reevaluating current practices, current ways of policing, current policies, and ensuring that the best way of policing, the best practices, best procedures are in place to effectively serve our community. Again, I'm on the November 8th ballot running as a no party affiliate. I don't believe that politics should have any role in electing the top law enforcement official for the county. I'm not running as a politician, but I'm running as a professional law enforcement official with a diversified background for a diversified profession. Charles Chuck Broadway for Sheriff. Thank you for your time. Well, good evening, Revolution. Thank you for having us here tonight. Thank you, Pastor. 
My name is Peyton Grinnell, and I am running for the Office of Sheriff here in Lake County. And I'm honored to have the endorsement and the support of our current sheriff, Gary Borders, who is retiring at the end of this year. I was born and raised in this great county. I graduated Leesburg High School in 1986, at which time I joined the United States Marine Corps. I was assigned the Marine Corps Special Operations Command's Fleet Anti-Terrorism Strike Team, where I held a top-secret security clearance, served two combat deployments, and underwent extensive counterterrorism training. In 1993, I graduated from the Police Academy in Eustis and was hired at your Sheriff's Office in 1994. I've promoted up through the ranks. I've had extensive senior leadership training to include graduating from the FBI's National Academy in Quantico, Virginia, the Chief Executive Seminar at the Florida Department of Law Enforcement in Tallahassee, as well as the Administrative Officers Course at the University of Louisville Southern Police Institute. I've worked in criminal investigations, uniform patrol, community services, served as the Public Information Director, as well as the Training Center Director, and other things at the Lake County Sheriff's Office. For the last 10 years, I've served as second in command, working side by side with Sheriff Gary Borders, running the day-to-day -day, day -day operations of our 700 member agency. 700 of the most professional men and women in the state of Florida that go to work every day to serve you, to make sure that the quality of life in this county remains high. I couldn't be more proud of them. Been married to my high school sweetheart now for 27 years. We have a daughter who is a senior at University of Central Florida, and my son is a sophomore in high school. No offense, Pastor, but our church home is Heritage Community Church in Fruitland Park, and Pastor Sid Brock rocks the world. Thank the world of him. He's the guy that's got me through this campaign. You know, for the last 23 years, while working at your sheriff's office, I've supported this community. I'll continue to support this community, and I'll continue to support, protect, and defend our Constitution and government of the federal government as well as the state of Florida. You know, it's personal for me. This is a great county, and I couldn't be more proud to work alongside the men and women of the Lake County Sheriff's Office as well as the 12 police departments, including Claremont Police Department, who does a fantastic job. So I would ask for your vote on November the 8th, Peyton Grinnell for Lake County Sheriff. Thank you very much. Well, we have two very qualified candidates for sure. What, Peyton, I think, is that you? I got it. You got it? All right. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to, I've got some questions for them. And like I said, they've already been uh, informed of these questions. So I'm just going to, I'll just start here. Since we start in this order. We'll just go this way, if that's okay. And I'm going to ask you uh, the questions as you have received them. And so here's our first question for the evening. In recent years, we have had situations where law enforcement had to get involved in fights on school campuses. Do you see your department doing anything different when it comes to school violence? A very good question, a very relevant question for today. Um, first and foremost, I believe, is the early engagement between law enforcement and our youth. Setting up several programs where our youth, our young preteens, having a positive engagement, positive interaction with law enforcement. So there's that, that healthy respect. I believe in bringing back the DARE program to our middle schools and our high schools. And even in furtherance of that, I also believe in having our deputies involved in our elementary schools. Some way or some fashion, having some type of program where our deputies are making an impact in our elementary schools before they get to middle school and high school as well. PAL programs, I grew up in PAL programs, programs that were geared toward our youth, kept me <laughs> out of trouble. I'm involved in different uh, athletic programs and programs that helped me make the right decisions in life that I would look to bring back. And also too, you know, when we talk about um, intervention and preventing uh, violence in our schools and amongst our youth, I do believe that a lot of us, we all have roles to play. Everyone from parents, to teachers, to educators, to pastors, how Pastor Moses is talking about how he wants to utilize this church to help out in our communities. We all have a role to play in, in being involved in our youth and mentoring and coaching and teaching and teaching on the dangers of violence and drugs and alcohol abuse. It takes all of us to do our part and we will see an impact in uh, teenagers and in reference to violence in the schools. Thank you. Peyton?
you know, you've seen where we've had the violence in the schools, not just here in the state of Florida, but across the nation, but as well as in Leesburg High School, where uh, my alumni. And I will tell you that, you know, first of all, we have a school resource deputy in every high school and middle school in Lake County, with the exception of Mount Dora Police Department, they provide their own. And those school resource deputies are in those schools, not just to enforce the law, they do a great job of doing that, but they're in those schools to mentor, to be role models, and to make sure that those students in that school understand that they can realize their dreams, no matter how big they are. And those school resource deputies do everything from mentoring to providing instructional material on cyberbullying to providing instructional material on the dangers of sexting in those schools. But let me tell you something. When you put 3,000 students in a high school, <laughs> you're going to have issues. And there are times throughout the last few years, where we've, we've had three deputies in one high school. Several we have two in. And those deputies are busy. And they do a great job. But you know, unfortunately, you only hear about the bad things that happen on a school campus. You don't hear about the good things. I have the privilege of seeing these students after graduation and after college coming back and looking up that deputy sheriff that was the positive role model in their life that helped them get through whatever issue he or she was facing. So that's a great program. And I also believe in bringing back the D.A.R.E. program to our schools because it's more than just drug abuse, resistance, and education. It's about life skills. It's about teaching these kids conflict resolution and how to succeed in today's world. It's a tough world out there that our children face today. And I'll tell you, one other thing that the sheriff and I did, when that kid gets into that school fight on campus, we decided, you know what? A fight's gonna happen from time to time. But should that kid's dreams be thrown in a garbage can because he got in that he or she got in that school fight so we instituted what's called the willow program work in lieu of arrest to where with the parents cooperation and approval that child that got in that school fight on school grounds now goes to the sheriff's work farm for five saturdays and does work labor at that work farm and if they complete that they have a clean record because we believe that we also have a responsibility on the back end to make sure that when a kid makes a mistake, and they will make mistakes, I just didn't get caught. <laughs> but when a kid makes a mistake, that they have a chance to recover from it. So, you know, we're going to have the youth violence in the schools, but I, I think that the deputies do a great job of making sure that uh, we keep that at a minimum. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, two questions uh, before we get to the next. I just you both mentioned Dare. Just so we know, is is Dare? Can we inst reinstitute Dare um, through the sheriff's office, or is it something that has to be done politically? What? How does that all happen? I believe it's just funding. Uh, <laughs> it comes down to funding the program, Money. and it's through the sheriff's office, though, correct? County commission. Okay, gotcha. Now you know who to talk to. Okay, and second thing is, can I send my kids to the camp? Yes, okay, okay, just curious. Okay. All right. Here, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is he going to be there? If Unsworth's there, I'm definitely not sending He's rough. Okay. All right. Here, here's, here's the next question for you, gentlemen. Um, and this one is, is, is near and dear to my heart. Our desire here at Revolution Church is to, is to really reflect the, the population of the church. We desperately wanted to reflect the body of Christ in, in an appropriate way, which means all different ethnicities, different age groups, diff people from different walks of life. And that is our heart. Uh, so that's why it's near and dear, this question to us. But it says, this is the second question, our country has seen many incidents where there is tension and violence between ethnic groups, as well as between certain ethnic groups and law enforcement. How do you fight uh, how, do you, how, do you, how do you fight this, uh, this, this tension here in Lake County so it's a peaceful and welcoming community for people to want to live here? Yeah. Nationwide, we've seen a lot of um, uh, anti-unity. Uh, we've seen a lot of division 
and, and, and polarization. Um, but, but I must say in Lake County, uh, specifically Claremont where I, can, where I can speak of, we have not really seen that division. Uh, we've actually seen a, a, a reverse to that. We've actually seen our community really stepping up and praising our officers and praising law enforcement and thanking them for what they do every single day. Um, every week someone is bringing something to the police department to thank officers. Yes, they're bringing donuts as well to us. <laughs> <laughs> But every week, uh, even a card from schools that they're bringing to, to thank our police officers for what they do every single day. But even though that it still does, is not really impacting us or affecting us, that's something that we still cannot ignore um, because it is happening throughout this nation. Um, again, I believe in being proactive on the front end of building these relationships with our community. Um, I believe in leading from the front. I am not a, a, a CEO of a law enforcement agency that sits behind my desk. I am out in the community rubbing shoulders with people, building that rapport, encouraging my officers to have that positive interaction every time they go out. Make sure you have a positive interaction with someone in our community, um, ensuring that we're building those relationships and building those rapport. So if there is a questionable incident between law enforcement and our community, we can meet like this and have a dialogue and have a healthy communication and come up with solutions and work collectively and collaboratively to solve the problem and continue to enhance quality of life. I believe it also is about transparency and agency of law enforcement, so just being transparent with our community so that we can have this healthy dialogue as well. Again, building that rapport and moving forward. Also, which impacts this is ongoing training. Ongoing training that our officers are being well-trained in deconfliction and, and diversity training so that our officers know how to deal with professionally with people from all different religious, races, backgrounds, criminal backgrounds. Again, building that rapport, building, that, building those relationships on the front end. And last but not least, ensuring that our agency is diversified, that it reflects the community that we serve, male, female, races, denominations, to truly reflect the community that we serve every single day. Thank you. You know, we're, we, I, I would agree with the transparency of the agency. We are also accredited at Lake County Sheriff's Office, where every three years we undergo a very stringent review of all of our standards and procedures and policies that we have in place to make sure that we are doing the right thing. And we are doing the right thing at your Lake County Sheriff's Office. And I'll take it a step farther. My command staff, my leadership team that I put in place, it will be a requirement of each and every one of them that they will belong to either a Rotary, a Kiwanis, Pastor, I don't care if they come here and hold Bible study for you, but they will be involved in their community at some form or level. Right now, we make that a requirement as part of the promotional process for our deputies. We look in the professional assessment area of their background, if you will, to see what type of community service that our employees are doing to make this county a better place to live in. Because we believe that if law enforcement is out in our community, they're listening to what the issues are. And our hope is they bring that back to us so that we can then act on those issues. I would also tell you that, you know, external stakeholders have to be involved. People like you, Pastor, other pastors in the area. Every month, we go out into our community, somewhere in this county, 1,156 square miles, we take our entire leadership team, and we go out into the community and we hold a town hall meeting. We explain to our citizens why we do what we do and how we do it and how we spend their tax dollars. But more importantly, we ask them, how can we do it better? What are your concerns or what are your suggestions? So they then see that we have a vested interest in making sure that this county remains great and that we work together. Let's face it, it's 1,156 square miles, over 300,000 population. We have 700 employees. We cannot do this job by ourselves. We have to have community support, and we are blessed to have citizen support in this county, and that's something I don't take for granted, and I will make sure that we continue to be engaged in our community and continue to stay out front of the criminal element in Lake County to make sure that we all 
we all come together for the common goal of making sure you are safe and secure in your home at night. Thank you. All right, the last of our three questions before we open it up to you all. Um, how would you handle preparations when it comes to local acts or threats of terrorism? For example, like the Orlando nightclub shooting. And I know we haven't had that kind of chaos here, um, you know, but we're always one day away. You never know. So, sure. um, Thank you, Pastor. First, um, we, we have law enforcement agencies, including the Sheriff's Office and the various different municipalities in Lake County. We have a structure in place uh, called Incident Command System. And it's pretty much everyone having a role and holding and being held accountable to that role. This command system is set up for everything from details such as a large parade where we're expecting a large amount of attendees. Uh, and, and if you've ever been to Pig on a Pond in, in Claremont, we have an ICS along with the Sheriff's Office for that event because of the large crowd that are coming. So everyone has a role and everyone held accountable. But that structure is also put in place for incidents such as the Pulse nightclub and things of that nature where everyone is accountable and they have a role goes back to ongoing training, not just training in the academy, but ongoing training. One thing that we have set up at the Claremont Police Department, with grant funds, we purchased a training simulator. A training simulator. You may have seen this on the news, but it's a huge screen uh, where officers are issued um, firearms, but they're not capable of ejecting a round. And it's the closest that you can get to a real life scenario. It's a narrow based training, and you're interacting with people on this screen. And we have scenarios set up for active shooters and officer responding um, where there's mul multiple casualties, ongoing and training. We also use our, utilize our local schools during the summer when the kids are out. The local school department, sc local schools open up their school grounds to us and we have access to entire school grounds and set up role playing and, and do active shooting training and training and geared toward uh, mass casualties and things of that nature ongoing training, just not in the academy, once again, ongoing as when we are uh, within our agency. Also our partnerships. We have developed great partnerships, not just with agencies within Lake County, uh, but we work well together if there was an incident such as like that. We also have partnerships with FDLE, where I, my prior agency, which is the State Law Enforcement Investigative Agency. Partnerships with the FBI, partnerships with several different federal governments, emergency management, everyone having their role and everyone coming together to work collectively and collaboratively to ensure the safety of our residents. Thank you. As the chief said, you know, the National Incident Management System came out after after the 9-11 uh, and we do all, all chiefs and sheriffs across the state of Florida as well as across the nation respond the same way it doesn't matter if you're in florida or if you're in georgia but i'll tell you that the florida sheriff's association has taken an additional step we've broken the state down into what we call regional domestic security task force and you know pastor you said that we knock on wood are fortunate we haven't had something like pulse nightclub but i would have to disagree with you you know the groundhog day tornadoes of february of 2007 Dozens of people lost their lives in this county, and we pushed that button. We activated that Regional Domestic Security Task Force, and what that is is there's five counties in our region that Lake County is in. For example, in the Pulse nightclub shooting, our tractor-trailer command center was on scene over there because in the state of Florida, every sheriff knows what resources and assets each neighboring county sheriff has. So if they need something, it's as simple as making a phone call. So we sent our tractor trailer command center over for the Pulse nightclub shooting. In 2007, we took our tractor trailer command center to Lady Lake, and I ran that operation. But then Sheriff Kevin Berry, prior to Sheriff Demings coming in office, ran the Lake Mac location with their command center. We required two command centers. We had two different points of interest, if you will, that there were mass casualties, and uh, it worked out very well. I would also tell you that we have an intelligence and homeland security unit at the sheriff's office that is very involved in making sure that we stay current 
on real-time data. Our guys that work in that unit, and girls, we have some ladies in there, have been sworn in with federal credentials, top secret security clearances, so they're able to get that information and not have to sit on it. I don't want to alarm anybody in this room, but believe it or not, here in Little Lake County, we've had to go out at the request of the FBI to notify somebody at a residence that they were on ISIS hit list. Fortunately, that individual was no longer living here in Lake County, had since moved down to the uh, South Florida coast area. But we do get that information, and we act on it right away. But I would tell you, because of the leadership of the Florida Sheriff's Association, because of the leadership of the sheriffs in this state, and because of the National Incident Management System, we're as prepared as we can be. But we need our citizens. We need you. You're going to be the one to see something out there, and when you see it, you have to call us so we can act on it right away. Thank you very much. All righty.